what, what attracted to you to the role? Well, he's got a sort of intensity, this guy, and I just I sort of got really involved in the story. I enjoyed the, the story and I enjoyed the script very much. And the crossover between fantasy and reality that John Tertullus has managed to put into the script is extremely clever. That appealed to me. You know, I think audiences are going to love it. Essentially, the story follows, you know, the horse being born and growing up and being taught how to be a, you know, a horse. There's my character, who's simply called the man. He's not at all a villain, and he's not a nasty guy. He wants to possess the horse, which is a very human uh, condition, I think, you know, to wanting to possess nature or you know, uh, make nature bend to his will. We had to find someone for this one character, and someone who had this sort of strength of appearance, this strength of presence, and, um, and we narrowed it down to one person, Russell Crowe, and we just feel that you know, Russell is that person, is the man. See, this is a story about horses. It, all the human characters are peripheral, and, and um, that's not where the central thrust of the plot, so to speak, is. We've gone through quite a long process between myself and John Tertullus, deciding exactly where he comes from, um, what his financial background is, and, and his family background as well. Um, simply because when you read the script, there's absolutely none of it there. I got to do all, all the writing, all the stunt work, um, and that was, they needed that. They needed the, um, the man to be able to be seen to be doing everything, so. For about three or four years in a row, um, I rode horses, and at a young age, you know, anything you learn when you're younger, it just stays with you, you know. My, my parents would send me off to a youth camp to ride horses for about a month a year. It was just, it was a very cheap holiday to get me out of the house for a month. I've been up in the high country now for about two and a half weeks working with Peter Faithful, who's one of the, the best uh, horsemen in the district. And we've been having a barrel of fun. Uh, an easy, gentle ride in Peter's mind is seven and a half k's down to the river and seven and a half k's back up again. And what are you talking about, tracks? <laughs> that two and a half weeks was invaluable for me. I got three horses that specifically make up my character horse. I got. Um, this 11-year-old gelding called Echo, whose horse we use mainly. Um, and he's a really powerful, lovely sort of Australian stock horse. And then we've got Angela, who's a six-year-old six mare. Um, now, she's a beautiful-looking horse, but is um, not, probably not necessarily anywhere near as fast or clever or agile or anything as Echo. And then we've got Davy, who's a young four-year-old who hasn't been ridden much at all, and he's for all the really crazy stuff. So. <laughs> you know, the three horses make up the one. And then there's always Cooley. <laughs> my uh, my co-star. Um, you're not going to ask me what I like best, horses or dogs or anything, because she gets really offended and doesn't talk to me for days. <laughs> the dog is a very intelligent dog here. You know, you can't get any old dog to come along and do that sort of thing. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, a great rapport and relationship we built up and everything. I have started mumbling to the horses and the dogs and, <laughs> and all the other animals, but that's probably just part of my own madness happening. I don't think anybody who's out here by themselves, alone with, with their animals, is not going to um, begin some <laughs> philosophical discussions with them at some point in time. He does become obsessed, yeah. I mean, it's, it's simply part of what he does in the beginning. You know, catching a horse is just um, a relatively routine and day-to-day -day part of life in this area. But then he doesn't actually catch the horse, or the horse keeps getting away from him, so he becomes more and more obsessive about it. He's got humanity and, and, and kindness and all that sort of stuff in him as well. I mean, he doesn't at all want to hurt the horse, you know. He wants um, to be able to control it. So when this horse keeps outwitting him, that just fuels him even further to um, conquer it, you know. It's a very traditional story, you know, um, told in a very magical way. If you push things to a certain point, there's got to be a break, and Farah doesn't want to be under this man's control. Nature is in the ascendant. <laughs>